Hi, welcome back to Arthritis Now, brought to you by the Arthritis National Research Foundation. July is Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month. That's right, kids get arthritis. Be sure to check out the latest research information at curearthritis.org. This month, we're going to be sitting down with Dr. Scott Canna, a researcher at the National Institutes of Health, who's working hard to find a cure for juvenile arthritis. Hi, Dr. Kana. Thank you very much for being here with us today. We very much appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. So you were funded by the Arthritis National Research Foundation just last year. That's true. And um, Hopefully. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, and so, you know, as our foundation, we pride ourselves on funding young investigators with outside the box and innovative ideas. And you are definitely someone that fits that mold. So why um, why do you think it's important to fund younger researchers with grants? And what did the grant that we provided mean to you? I think it's important to fund young researchers because uh, you want to have a pipeline of people who are going to continue to investigate things. And as anyone who is watching you know, th this blog probably knows, uh, funding for biomedical research has really not uh, kept pace with even the rate of inflation and has actually decreased pretty substantially over the last, let's say, decade or, or more. The ANRF, for me personally, sort of stepped in uh, and really enabled me to continue to do research um, uh, at a time when it was a little bit unclear whether I was going to have enough support to continue to be as focused on my research as I wanted to be. So right now, so correct me if I'm wrong, um, right now you are working on something called macrophage activation syndrome? That's right. Good so, for you. <laughs> thank you. So could you explain to those of us who don't know what that is and what your goal is with, with it? Sure. I, I would love to. Uh, so, so a macrophage uh, comes from the Greek, macro meaning big and phage meaning eaters. Uh, and so I am drawn to these, th these are cells of our immune system. I'm drawn to them because I eat a lot. <laughs> so clearly that was the cell type for me. Yeah. Um, no, so, so uh, macrophage activation syndrome or MAS, because we have to make an acronym out of everything, mm -hmm. uh, is, is, it's actually a, quite a scary thing, or at least it can be. Um, it's a whole body inflammation. So uh, it's a little bit like if you've heard of sepsis, where the body has an overwhelming inflammatory response to infection, only there's usually no infection there. Uh, and so this MAS happens in the context of, of a number of inflammatory scenarios, and the ones we're most interested in, obviously, are rheumatic diseases. And so there's a number of rheumatic diseases, uh, most notably lupus and systemic juvenile arthritis, uh, and adult stills disease, which is a lot like systemic juvenile arthritis, uh, where a, a good percentage of people will have this as a complication of their disease. And it's really very poorly understood. We call it macrophage activation syndrome because if you look in places where there's inflammation, like in the bone marrow, you'll see on, on just sort of uh, looking under a microscope a lot of activated-looking macrophages. And some of the tests that we look for in the blood support that the macrophages are really activated. But beyond that, there's really not a whole lot that we know about it. Although uh, not just myself, but a number of really uh, another, a number of other very talented groups are, are studying this as well. And so, and so your goal, your main goal with it is to try and, and just find out more about what it does. And well, absolutely. So, so one, um, you know, I think, uh, as in all things in research, what we learn about macrophage activation syndrome is not going to be exclusively helpful to the people who are acutely having macrophage activation syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be helpful in understanding the diseases in which it occurs. And it's also going to be helpful uh, in understanding other diseases that look like it, such as sepsis uh, and, and other kinds of infection uh, or severe allergic reactions, any kind of whole body inflammation. So it has the possibility to to affect a lot of autoimmune diseases, possibly? Uh, there's a difference between autoimmune and auto-inflammatory, and a MAS seems to be more in that auto-inflammatory sort of flavor of, of bad inflammation. So, you, so I know you kind of just recently moved to NIH, correct? That's right. Um, so how has that 
been different from your previous institutions and what has it allowed you to do um, differently? One, it, it, will, it has allowed me to really be extraordinarily focused just on research, um, which, which has its ups and downs. I don't see as many patients as I used to. I don't see general rheumatology patients uh, hardly at all anymore. Uh, and I miss that terribly. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, I hope to get back to that. But the, this is a really important point, both in my research and in my career, for being focused on, on my research. So as far as juvenile arthritis um, is concerned, uh, I know there is sometimes a little bit of a controversy in that, you know, is it children who have um, an adult disease or is it or are is juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and um, rheumatoid arthritis completely separate and should be treated as such. What do you think is, is, what is your opinion on that? The type of arthritis that children get most commonly is very different than rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, it's sometimes treated with the same medicines or similar medicines, uh, but the natural history of it, the joints that it affects, the way it affects life, not to mention that it's happening in a person who's still growing, who, uh, you know, has, has, you know, different occupational things that they do. You know, bouncing on a trampoline is probably important for a five-year-old, maybe not so much for a 65-year-old. <laughs> so um, I think for a lot of sort of both uh, scientific and sociocultural reasons, uh, they're quite different. And it's, it's actually, I think, really important for, for people who are treating arthritis to understand that uh, it's not the same as, as grandma's rheumatoid arthritis. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this video to raise juvenile arthritis awareness. We'll see you next time.